Research says resilience and grit determine quality of life in a crisis. But what is resilience? Who are the ordinary people doing extraordinary things while staying healthy and safe during COVID? How do they persevere with passion in the middle of a public health crisis? Join us as they share their stories and show us everything. What's up, what's going on? It's Jimmy G. I'm gonna be honest with you, I know absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing about vegan foods, but I'm looking forward to learning and trying some new foods today. Uh, and comfort foods have been the theme throughout pandemic, but vegan foods have just been a true success business story. And today we're in Lake Como, New Jersey, gonna try the alternative plate, right, uh, right basically in downtown at Belmar in Lake Como. And can't wait to give it a shot. Peter Chef Tivon is gonna show us his business today and gonna try some foods, learn more about his business and really see how he's been successful throughout the pandemic. Let's go on inside. Chef, what's up, man? Hey guys, how are you? Morning, everybody. How's how are you? Alternative plate, uh, talk about it. Talk about um, the business plan and, and how it really all started. My mother got ovarian cancer. And uh, I think that started the uh, progression on trying to understand why. Yeah. And uh, in trying to understand why, um, it led me on a uh, journey to investigate. And upon investigation, um, started to learn about the Natural Hygiene Society and uh, read a book called Fit for Life. That was a diet book in the 80s mm -hmm. and food combining. And um, all of a sudden it just engulfed me because here's someone that, it's your mother. Absolutely. You know, who you love to death. And uh, taken away at an early age. And yet the confusing part was they came from an Italian family off the boat from Naples. And you thought that, wow, they, they know how to eat. So, uh, Absolutely. So alternative plate, you know, like you're talking about, takes pride in being organic, takes pride in being vegan. And what are some things on the menu that people are starting to really enjoy and, and starting to grab attention throughout the Jersey Shore, even throughout New Jersey in general? Uh, it, the idea behind it is, is to make it non-confrontational, but to let the food speak for itself. Uh -huh. Because no matter how much you could be the smartest guy and the smartest communicator, mm -hmm. okay, if the food is not good, you're not transitioning anybody. Exactly. Uh, what we're trying to imitate, whether it be uh, corned beef, whether it be mac and cheese, whether it be lasagna uh -huh. and a regatta or cannoli cream <laughs> or whatever, and we have, we have a lot of different things. It's to make it taste a hint of, because when you're transitioning to a healthy diet, you don't want to taste chicken. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to taste steak. Mm -hmm. You want to eat a steak. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? But if you want to eat something healthy that can replace that steak yeah. and not kill you 20 years from now or 10 years from now, there are alternatives yeah, totally. if you open up your eyes. Absolutely. And, that's, and that's the whole point is to, is to really show people that there is a choice. Transitioning into obviously a, an uncomfortable time, a, a unique time, the pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic. How is the alternative plate adjusting and, and trying to you know, be better throughout this time. To understand their position, whether I agree with it or not, mm -hmm. uh, is to convey that just because I don't believe what you believe, that doesn't mean I don't believe in you kind of thing, because mm -hmm. we're all kind of being separated. Uh -huh. And it's really our job to really come back together, because that's where it is about community uh, and beyond. And, and I guess the goal for Alternative Plate is to make your food and the food that you create and make on your menu is to hopefully bring everyone together. It, it does bring everybody together, but it has it has side effects. Mm -hmm. And the side effects are is that you could lose weight. You don't have to worry about kidneys because of the protein intake. Absolutely. Or worry about calcium being leaked from your body. Uh -huh. You could also know that this can keep you healthy and build your immune system to help you fight against things like this versus things that don't help you to do that. Wow, that's awesome. All right, today uh, we're gonna start off making uh, alternative plates, buffalo mac and cheese. We're talking comfort food here. So hold on to your bippies. And this is alternative plates, nacho cheese. And we use it for our mac and cheese. And it's a combination of miso, organic cashews, roasted red peppers, uh, vegetable stock, 
spices, and other stuff. We're gonna let that heat up a little bit. And we're gonna add our pasta. Uh, because they typically eat a mac and cheese that's made out of a box. Okay. Which just think about a cheese sauce that has 22 ingredients in it. <laughs> like why? Uh-huh. Um, uh, where this has actually um, probiotics, uh, omega-3s, vitamin C, um, natural fat from the cashews, and it's organic and there's no chemicals in it. Phenomenal. Here we have our organic chicken that I just diced up. You can see here's it, here it is sliced. And all I did was dice it up. We make this, it's uh, organic wheat with pea protein, organic pea protein, beans, vegetable stock, different spices. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pan sear this also. And this is what's gonna go on top of our mac and cheese. Now our cheese sauce is a little hot. We're gonna turn the heat a little down. Okay, we're done with that. We're gonna plate it right here. And this is typically we'd have a do it. Don't uh, make fun of my plating skills. And that's one, uh, that's, that would be That would order. be in order, yeah. Wow. That, that, so what we normally do is we take some fresh cut organic cherry tomatoes, right? Get your vitamin C in there, your lycopene. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna to top it with the buffalo chicken. And I see that buffalo sauce on the side. Wait. Oh yeah, we're gonna, don't worry about it. We're gonna, we're gonna fire hose down this baby. <laughs> and then what we do is this uh, is alternative plates, buffalo sauce. It's made with organic butter, organic Worcestershire sauce, and a couple other bunch of spices. So we're gonna top it with a little avocado, sort of like an egg. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna splash it with our organic buffalo sauce. We have some organic cilantro that we get from Edible Gardens. Uh, they're an herb grower in Belvedere, New Jersey. They grow every kind of herb you could think of to use in food. And there you go. And there is alternative plates, organic, buffalo, loaded mac and cheese. All right, Chef, we're gonna transition now to the alternative plate French toast. Uh, I see just beautiful ingredients to the side here. We have organic Granny Smith caramelized apples that are pan seared, and ginger, nutmeg, vanilla, uh, sucanat, some vegan butter. Uh, these are wild uh, blueberries that I pan seared the same way. This is alternative plates cannoli, organic cannoli cream. Wow. That you guys are gonna have to tell me what you think if it's close. I, I don't want it exact. I don't want to get any cannoli maker mad. Uh, and this is alternative, this is pretty unique. This is alternative plates mix. It's an egg mix. Okay. And this has so many great things in it, like omega-3s, uh, pea protein. Uh, it's made with organic milks. We have seven grain Ezekiel bread. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna dip it real quick and we're gonna put it in some pan seared butter and uh, just a hint of olive oil. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take these caramelized apples and we're gonna cook them along with it. Because what I like to do with French toast is I want them to take it up a couple of steps. And when, you know, the term we use is loaded. And uh, all we're gonna do is just really quickly pan sear this. So now let's plate it. Now we're just gonna put the caramelized apples on top of the pan seared seven grain Ezekiel bread with alternative plate take mix. And then what we're gonna do is just gonna top it with the other piece. Wow, look at that. Oh no, it gets better, it gets better. It gets <laughs> that better. cannoli cream sitting to oh, the side Oh yeah, there. oh no, Let, let's, let's do it. I don't know if it firmed up enough because I just did make it. And what we're gonna do is just gonna take an ice cream scooper with the cannoli cream. It's got all good stuff in it. And we're gonna put that right on top. Oh, look at that. Just like that. Give it a little bath. Put a little piece of vegan bacon to give it that little nice. salty savory. Let's hit it with a little powdered sugar. Is alternative plates, cannoli topped with wild blueberries and bacon. Now, the resistant is some more great organic maple syrup and let's just shower it with that. Oh my lord. And then it, the, ba the syrup on the bacon and over the toast and over the blueberries. And when you cut into that, I mean. <sighs> hey 
right, Chef, what's next? Uh, what, what we got next on the alternative plate menu? Well, this is the dish. You know, one of the comforts we all grew up with was the Reuben. So what I did is I recreated uh, that uh, sandwich, but I gave it a little crunch. I put it on organic bread that Alternative Plate makes, and that's organic pita bread that we make. And what we're gonna do with it is we're gonna pan sear it. So remember the nonlinear approach. So basically what you're gonna be getting is a grilled cheese, Reuben, pizza, <laughs> kind of a uh, uh, crunch, uh, and a burger melt. Wow. Like all in one with a hot dog. Awesome. This is organic sauerkraut and kimchi, and we make it here. We don't make the, we don't make the sauerkraut yet, and we don't make the kimchi, but we will. And what I do is I combine it with different spices, some smoke. I pan sear it just to get the flavors to meld and cut it because I don't want to kill the bacterial effect, the probiotic effect okay. of the sauerkraut, which sauerkraut is good for you. Mm -hmm. That's good for the gut. And this is alternative plates special sauce. This is like a Russian dressing and a um, uh, cream sauce mixed together. But in combination, it has mustard, ketchup, you know, everything you remember having on a, like a burger mm -hmm. or a, a hot dog as a kid, but it's all organic. Wow. And we make it in-house. Yeah, it looks And we beautiful. add a little different things. We add a little yogurt in it. We add a little stuff because we want you to get benefit of stuff. Imagine that you're actually building health or not hurting yourself by using these particular ingredients every day. So what's going to happen to you in 10, 20, 30 years? You may get an extra 10, 20, 30 years. You're right. And, and a lot of people don't understand that. A lot of the ketchups and mustards that you, you know, take right out of your refrigerator. Yeah, they're full of sugar. Yeah, they're full of sugar and artificial sugars and, and, and stuff like that. Um, so now we're just going to take a little butter. There's a company called Follow Your Heart that we use. This is smoked Gouda. Here's another layer of flavor mm -hmm. on a sandwich. And we're going to take smoked Gouda. We're going to put it on the bottom where we're going to put our meat. And then we're going to put the American cheese on top. And we're just going to let that pan sear. We don't want it to burn. And all I'm really doing is, is I'm just searing it. That's how fast. It cooks that fast because there's no saturated fat or cholesterol in the meat, which the meat to most ailments, if you, had, if you had to pick one, would definitely be saturated fat. Pick one. Diabetes, heart disease, kidney disease. It's probably the main one, the main one that goes through it. So here's a, here's a product that can give you the same texture, same taste, but 10 times the benefit. And then basically, this, this is how fast the food can be made. So it could be applied in any uh, restaurant. And so what I, basically what I did is I put the meat on top of the smoked Gouda side. And then what I did is I'm going to take this kimchi and I'm going to put it right on top. I'm getting a smell of hot dog, of you're gonna, you're gonna, Like I said, it's it, nonlinear. It, it, yeah. it has to be. It can't be. It has to go next level. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take it out. Oh, he's going, oh, you're going to love me so much. <laughs> See, and what we're going to do is put this organic special sauce. And then what we do is that we just fold it over like that, cre uh, that grilled hit, cheese. That, look at that crisp. The crisp and then you you're going to see about. the crisp. Mm -hmm. See it? Absolutely. And then what we're going to do, that, I mean, that's how I serve it. It's not like for TV. No, that's really how it comes. And then what we're going to do is just going to cut it on an angle. Not much of an angle, but... It, it, it reminds me of a little like a panini as well. It, uh, it could, it could it, well, there's the nonlinear pro. It, 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 it could be, it could go either way. How uh -huh. do you, it depends on, it's versatile to any menu. Uh-huh. And, and I wish the viewers can smell how Oh, you guys don't have smell smells. vision Oh. <laughs> and I would just take all this, all the scraps that come out of the sandwich, I, I would just put it on there anyway for them. Because people love kimchi, you know. Alternative plate. Ruben. Chef, this is an unbelievable day. To the French toast, to the buffalo mac and cheese, everything here at Alternative Plate uh, is special and, and you can tell your passion and energy towards what you build in this kitchen. Uh, it's pretty magnificent and I wish you nothing but success uh, in the future and once we get out of this pandemic, all good things coming. Well, it's up to him. That's all right. I'm just a vessel. <laughs> so uh, I really appreciate you guys coming down and giving me this opportunity. I give thanks. Uh, and yeah, I just hope that uh, the word can get out and we can impact as many people and uh, places 
as we can. Uh, I, and again, uh, the food will speak for itself. Alternative plate in Lake Como. I can't wait to try some of this food. What's up, man? Kyle, what's up, man? What How's are you it going? Got going on here? I'm currently eating vegan organic French toast, dude. It's incredible. Vegan. And here at the French alternative toast. plate in Lake Como, they just make incredible stuff. You got organic lasagna, organic buffalo chicken. Macaroni and cheese, organic, vegan, French vegan toast. buffalo chicken? It That's doesn't organic? make any sense for guys like you and I, because you know, we're out and about, but I'll tell you what, I might, I might turn into a vegan. Hey guys, I'm here with my good friend George Larissis, owner of Bistro, where we're sitting right now. Teak, another uh, Red Bank restaurant, and Greek Eats. Greek so, Eats, yeah. How are you doing today? Doing good, doing good. How good, about yourself? Good to see you, man. Oh, I'm okay. doing great. Uh, any opportunity to see people during the pandemic and <laughs> kind of have a nice conversation is, is good. So for the people, I know a little about you, but why don't you give them a little introduction and kind of explain what's been going on. Oh, my name is George Laristas. Uh, me and my brothers own Bistro Red Bank, which has been here 25 years, 1996. Uh, we also have Teak Restaurant back in 2015, I believe we bought mm -hmm. that place. Turned that one around. We built a rooftop deck on that. Uh, live music, DJs. You Absolutely. Know, some of the stuff that we, we miss uh, dearly. Uh, then we also have our, our fast casual, which is Greek Eats, which is a, uh, it's a build your own gyro type of place. Uh, very fast casual, which worked out great for this pandemic because mm -hmm. there was a lot of takeout. So that that. You're killing it. You're not, you don't cook yourself, right? You just, I do, actually. You do? Yeah, when, uh, when we got shut down March 15th, uh, I went into the kitchen, emptied it out, and we, uh, we fed uh, a couple of soup kitchens. Uh, Guy Kevin came over here. He was online, and uh, basically we asked uh, who, who, needs, who, needs, who needs help. We're, we're going to empty out our kitchen because right. we weren't sure how long we were going to be shut down. Yeah, sure. So we uh, took it upon ourselves and said, listen, we're going to throw away food. Right. Let's just come on in cook as much as we possibly can. We emptied out Bistro first, Teak, and then we did Greek Eats as well. Okay. So like, that's one of the ways you've had to improvise, right? It's like, either you're gonna waste it, or you're gonna have to cook it up. Like, what are some other ways? Because I know, we, when we talked, you know, I, I directly have benefited from the you know, all yeah, the this outside, stuff, yeah. right? So uh, I think you should tell everyone else, like all the amazing stuff you did and how you've enabled so many people to stay working and. The truth of the matter is I'm responsible for 100 individuals and 100 families, so. Yep. You know, it, 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 weighed, it weighed on me a lot, like literally the, our last day, March 14th. Uh, if you go online, you'll see a picture of just a bunch of hands going in the middle. I get choked up thinking about it. Yeah. But uh, our last dinner service, we just didn't know. My job was to protect everybody. Yeah. And there was just no way of me protecting anybody at that point. So I really took it upon myself to try and figure things out. Mm -hmm. we, we did a pretty good job. Yeah. Uh, the, what you're talking about is Broadwalk. So... Basically, the town came up to came up to a couple individuals and said, "Look, we're looking, we're looking to shut down some streets and stuff. Get you guys operating when you're allowed." This was yep. before we weren't even allowed to do anything. We were still doing takeout. Right. So we sat down. We had a conversation. Chief of police basically gave us uh, an outline of what can be done and what can't be done, and we created this broadwalk. And mm -hmm. basically, they gave us a space, and we just took that space and created a party. And it was it was phenomenal. It absolutely yeah. was. It was a safe. It was a it was a safe environment. Everybody yeah. everybody kept saying it's you know not enough masks, not enough social distancing, not enough this. Not everybody's going to be happy about you know right. how much distance you're going to have between each other. But the people that were here were just happy to be out. Absolutely. Now the the idea was genius, and you're helping people. You're not only helping the people working in the area with jobs, but people who need normalcy, people who are sad and just want to go out and get food and, and listen and, to music. And a lot of people just don't get that. My, my mm -hmm. parents are old. So my dad's in his 80s, my mom's in her 60s, and uh, they haven't been out of the house. Yeah. It's been 10 months. Yep. Social distancing mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, I, I get that, the, that we're spiking and stuff like that, but I don't think yep. the restaurants are part of it. I really don't. No. Oh, and being outside the way we were. Absolutely. Everybody being safe, and nah, you helped us. You helped the musicians and the, the community. Governor, the everyone. governor was here three or four times in, in our in our in our plaza. He mm -hmm. saw it, you know. That's awesome. He agree, he agreed with it. He, he would have been the first one to shoot sh sh shut it down. Right, and you were one of the first people. They they had this issue where they needed the barricades, right? And you stepped in, and well, you were one of the people to help with that. So the town was nice enough to give us our space for bistro. But when you go look outside, there was a, you know, we're a city, we're a town. Mm -hmm. There was other areas that needed help. And, you know, somebody like um, Bob, 
uh, Bombay River, he had two tables sitting out there. Right. His neighbors weren't nice enough to give him extra room. My neighbors, all the way down the block. Yeah. Whatever you need, George, George. Down, you, you can come to my place, open it up. You know, just we just we just kept opening up. Right. And we were lucky enough, but some people just didn't want, you know, tables in front of their buildings. Right. So I called up Riverson, and I called Laura up, and I said, Laura, we need to do something here. What do we got? What, what, what can we do? She's like, well, these barricades. Uh, I was like, all right, so I guess get a couple plastic barricades. No, you know, Chief wants concrete barricades. Mm -hmm. I said, mm -hmm. like, you can't go to Home Depot and grab concrete barricades. <laughs> no, so I was like, listen, street. Laura, I was like, can you get your hands on it? He goes, yeah, but it's going to cost money. It's going to be expensive. But, you know, we're, we have no money coming in. I said, I, I, said, I got about twenty, thirty thousand dollars sitting off to the side for, from the food and wine walk money that yep. we raised as, as restaurant tours. Each mm -hmm. one of us, you know, did a tasting and we took that money. We're going to do marketing. I was like, I don't need marketing right now. Right. I just need someone to stay alive. I said, right. whoever needs them, get it for them, pay for it, get it delivered and set it up. That's awesome. And I think we did like six, I think six restaurants mm -hmm. uh, participated in that. And uh, I, be I believe, you know, that was a change to whether you stay open or not. Right. How wow. does somebody stay open with two tables? He got 10 tables, I believe, out of the deal. Right. Now, you know, that, that saved them. No, that, that out there was incredible. Yeah. Every single time we were there, the, the crowd was unbelievable. It, it was really amazing, and it, I really think that they, the people wanted it, you know. Mm -hmm. But you're, out, you're outside, so right. Right. The, the, level, the, the level of, what do you call it, the, of getting it and stuff like that, we're, we're a, little, a little less, is mm -hmm. what we all learned, right. which was great. So, we, you know, we tried to stay inside those parameters absolutely so what are you doing now now that it's a little colder and what's the future well you know they just keep throwing us curveballs and stuff and you know like uh the, just the 25 percent is it's it's not great but we do do takeout we do mm -hmm. a lot of takeout and yep. uh you know we, we were smart enough to grab those platforms uh doordash uber yeah, Rub sure. Up. we grabbed them as soon as they shut us down they, the day we shut down is the day we started working on takeout mm -hmm. and i guess i guess what we did was it was a chess game he's like you got to see your 10 moves in front of you so when we did when we did takeout we were looking at outdoor dining when we we're doing outdoor dining we were looking at indoor dining mm -hmm. you know tents and stuff like that all yeah, that stuff sure. was just sure. you know everybody was going to go grab it at the same exact time so if you didn't grab it Two months before, right. you didn't get them. Be too late. But we just we just kept thinking like, all right, what's next? Once we got it set up one way, we went to another way. Mm -hmm. At Teak, we had we had uh, <clears throat> the rooftop, which is a club. Yeah, you've it's played amazing. there before. Yeah, it's a great place. You have to yeah. go there. The food is delicious. The staff is awesome. Well, I, one of my favorite places to play. Thank you. Yeah. So we turned that into a restaurant. Can't be a club. So we turned it into restaurants. We had to get tables, chairs, and stuff like that. We just, you know, we set it up pretty nice up there. So mm -hmm. we had the outdoor deck, which was really nice. Yep. So we had we had space. If you had enough real estate, you survived. We were lucky enough to either have real, enough real estate or get enough real estate. Yeah, like sure. I said, my neighbors were kind enough on the left and the right of me. Now it's coming to the winter time, and you know, our customers are our customers are great. They're phenomenal. If they're not coming, if they're not coming in because they're nervous about you know being inside, they're ordering. Right. You know, our, our takeout is tremendous and we're so happy for it and it goes to show you you know after 25 years there's a lot of memories yeah and stuff like that and people do not want to lose those memories and stuff like you know first dates uh, ma uh marriages uh there's just uh, birthdays and stuff a lot yeah. of celebrations through these restaurants yeah. and and yeah. people remember that and when we did close down i remember the first week i just went online it's like i said i don't think i've ever said no to any one of you mm -hmm. i was like now i'm asking right Wow. He's like, it's a humbling, it's a humbling thing to sit there and say. Now I'm asking, mm -hmm. but they came out in droves and bought gift cards and stuff like that. Not even, not even realizing if we we're going to be open or not, if they're going to spend it. Right. They just gave, just like I gave, mm -hmm. they gave, and that's the difference between small businesses right. like us and big business where they don't even know your name. All right. Well, that's what this whole show is about. It's about ordinary people coming together and doing extraordinary things sure. in challenging times. Right. Sure. So like. You're one of those people, right? I, I like to think, as a musician, I, I help people, you're helping people feel yeah. good. So that segues into my next question is like, you know, what do you have to say to people who are feeling down and who are really, really struggling in these times and are looking for, you know, like an outlet? Like, what, what do you have to say to those people? You know, I, the Jersey Diners and how they're, you know, they're, they're struggling. They were struggling really, really hard. And I got a lot of family members in the diner business. Mm -hmm. And the, the one guy basically, I don't even know if he's open anymore, but his quote was, you drown in water, you don't drown in sweat. Mm. Okay? Hmm. You drown in water, but you don't drown in sweat. So you just keep moving, keep pushing. Yeah. You get you get down get down on a dump, try and figure it out. Like, you know, like it, there's there's gotta be another way. Yeah. You're sure. gonna figure it out. Sure. I, 
I didn't know. There's no roadmap to any of this. There's no end game like it was for Sandy. Sandy came in, it gets destroyed, we rebuilt. We don't have an end game here. You just got to keep changing it, keep keep adjusting, keep maintaining, try and keep as many as your staff involved. Yeah. Well, we were lucky enough to, to to keep most of our staff, and you know, some of them some of them changed, some of them some of them been some of them been here for a long time. Mm -hmm. But the one thing I will say about my staff is, when I was finally down on my hard times, yep. they didn't take a paycheck. They came in, they did take out, they didn't take a paycheck. Wow. And I asked him, I said, why are you guys doing this? He goes, if this doesn't survive, none of us survive. Wow. So the business in itself is more important than me wow. and them. Yeah. Sure. Because if we, if we don't get this business to survive, they don't have, they don't have their paychecks yep. and, and their mortgage is being paid. Mm -hmm. So what I did the first, the first week, me, Anthony, uh, Peter, my brothers, mm -hmm. we just cooked ourselves. The, the, when you asked me, you said, do you yeah. cook? Yeah, I, I, I cook, but I, I got so many things going on, I really don't cook as much right. as I should. Right. Right. But I did that week. Mm -hmm. And that week was just five or six of us. We opened up the two restaurants. We did take out. And I sent out a, ma a mass email out to all my staff because it wasn't just them. It was just literally the bosses right. working. And I was like, listen, guys, I know things are going to be rough. We don't know what's going on. I said, but your health insurance is paid. We just paid for it. So wow. to me, that was the most important thing right. was health insurance because you got COVID. You don't know. We didn't know what it was. Yeah, we didn't sure. know what to expect. So that given point to me was if we can survive being alive and being healthy, we can conquer it all. Yeah. So the health insurance was more important, which is a sad thing to, to think about because, you know, you, what, once that pay, that pay stop, insurance was going to stop. Common themes with everyone we've yeah. spoken to is they it's say... Really, Keep going because the bills don't stop. Life doesn't stop happening. Well, that's what I say. You always got to gotta ring register. Yeah. We, we, we remodeled the restaurant in, in, in the downtown. We were outside, you know, feeding people outside, but we were inside remodeling. Travis right. Travis did the, the nice logo and right. stuff. He's he's over here working and stuff. So mm -hmm. we all we all just chipped in. That's awesome. I knew you were a great dude, but I, hearing all these stories has just made me like, wow. You know, I mean, again, so many people in the community have benefited from, you know, what you took part in and then making that. A thing, and, and I, I really hope it happens again because some of those gigs were unforgettable. Yeah, I, mean, I, I really think that that was something special. Uh, yeah, you know, and, and even with the lights that they did and stuff like that, all those little things finally clicked into Red Bank. It's been a long time since Red Bank was, you know, kicking on all, on all mm -hmm. cylinders, and mm -hmm. it, I guess it took a pandemic for us to figure it out, My, but we did. Good. You know, we all step forward. No, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Ordinary people, right? It's community, Under these yeah. circumstances, yeah. but coming together. Your staff helping you out, you helping the community, everyone coming. No, that's awesome. It's Thanks. great to hear. All right, well, we learned a lot of stuff today. That was fantastic. This is Show Us Everything. I'm Kyle Ward, and you need to go check out Greek Eats, Bistro. You got to check out Teak. Uh, if it's through DoorDash, if it's through whatever, come in, stop in, get some food. But... Thank George for his time and uh, don't stop supporting local. That's right. Don't stop supporting local. Thank you so much. Have a great one. Show us everything wrapping up episode about comfort foods. Peter Teven in uh, Lake Como of Alternative Plate making vegan style lasagna. It really is incredible. I dug it. My favorite was the <laughs> French toast. Yes. I don't know what our Italian grandmothers would say about all of these <laughs> recipes, but we'll make do. I went to the bistro at Red Bank and I interviewed George Laristis, who is a successful restaurateur. He owns three local restaurants and he provided the Broadwalk, which is a great place for entertainers to play and for people to eat in, in the city of Red Bank during this time. So he was a great in, innovative restaurant owner who really made a difference. Yeah, fun episode, comfort foods, and don't forget to follow us all over on our social media platforms. Show us everything. Type it in on Instagram or on Facebook. And if you have any questions or concerns or Anything that you want answered, show us everything, social media at gmail.com. Send, uh, send us an email. We'll answer it throughout the episodes and answer it on our social medias.